Thank you guys for tuning in today. We're going to be rebuilding a Cub Cadet RTZ's um, transaxle, specifically the left one. Um, these are made by Hydro Gear. This is the EZT 2200 transaxle that Hydro Gear makes. A very common transaxle in a bunch of the big box store brand um, lawnmowers, but this one's going to be specifically a Cub Cadet. Um, they're very well known for going out and getting very, very weak. So if you're having this problem, please stay tuned. We're going to be tearing this thing apart, rebuilding it, and getting it back in the mower and getting it back out there cutting grass and uh, picking up leaves. Thank you guys for tuning in again, and stay tuned. Let's get to it. All right, guys, so to take this out of the machine, there's this one bolt up front. There's two on the side. I would take these ones out last. Um, it helps lower it more easily. And then you're going to have two bolts underneath. Grab one side with a vice grip, and then the other side has a nut. These hold both transaxles together. Next, we're going to remove the bypass lever, which is held on by a clip, and the lollipop linkage right there, which comes down and makes you go forward and reverse, along with the parking brake, um, which is that clip right there, and that pop that right out. Okay, once you get it out, you have to remove the pulley. Um, I use an impact gun, and this trick, you can use an old hose or a belt, um, an old lawnmower belt to hold this on with a vice grip. This helps it stop from turning. I could not get it off without using an impact gun, so uh, just keep that in mind. Then we're going to move on to removing the fill plug so we can flip the unit upside down and drain out as much oil out of the unit as possible. Next thing is to remove all external parts. This is your parking brake gear. It's held on by a very simple clip. Pop that off and it will slide right out. Next thing is the lever that controls you going forward and reverse. Uh, this is held on by a bolt with a star bit and then there's an allen key that takes off that next bolt below it. Now we're going to finish removing the loosened nut that I loosened with the impact gun and then pull all the parts off. These all just slide right off. Also, try to keep all your parts together uh, stacked in a way so you know what order all these parts go in. All right, so now next thing we're going to do is open it up, and we're going to remove all the bolts on the top, and then there's uh, RTV holding this thing together also. So it is a little tricky to get apart. You have to pry it apart. Um, get a screwdriver in the side. There's two slits on each side of it. You'll see them, and uh, you can get fit your screwdriver in there and pry it open, and then this is what it looks like with it opened up. Now we're going to remove the gears on the inside. You just have to remove the middle ones. Keep track of the order that everything goes in. Um, there are washers on top and bottom, um, so just remember where they go. And you don't have to remove the big gear. It's connected to the axle. It's just going to sit there. Next thing is to remove the three bolts that hold the center section in. It's the only three bolts you're going to have to remove on the inside. After you remove the center section, you're going to be able to remove the pump and the motor along with the bearings. And then you can remove the last piece out of it. All right guys, so we're almost ready to reassemble. I only missed one thing, and that is I cleaned the transaxle after removing it from the lawnmower with some degreaser, a brush, and a hose, just to remove as much dirt as possible um, so I didn't get any dirt inside the unit when I took it apart. Um, so just uh, make sure you do that, and let's get back to putting this thing back together. And so here we are. Here's our center section out of the unit. Um, as you can see here, there's very, very deep grooves in this that you can catch with your nail, and that is the issue here. I contacted Hydro Gear on their website through their website support system, and they emailed me with this diagram of my unit so I can pick out the right part numbers, and the part that we're looking for is called the center section, and here we are right there there's the part number just be aware that there is a left and right side so that's why I would just contact them to get the right diagram so you know what to buy also you need a seal kit so you can replace any seals that were removed so you can be sure that you are gonna have no leaks after the repair is finished very important step here guys this is the motor side of the hydraulic system and there are grooves in it um, that 
do need to be wet sanded out. So what I did was I put a little bit of fresh oil on it and I used 320 grit sandpaper to sand most of it down um, and get it flat. Just make sure you're on a flat surface and that you're doing it in a circular motion. Um, and then after I got done with this, I moved up to a 600 grit and to get the 320 grit sandpaper marks out of it um, just to make sure it was smooth. I was happy with the results, so uh, I kept going and put it together. And here was the finished sanding results after I uh, cleaned it up and I sprayed it down with some brake clean to make sure that all the uh, metal particles were off of it. Now we're going to take that motor that we just sanded down, make sure the pistons are in there with some fresh oil, put the bearing down in that hole where I'm laying the motor down in there, and then give it a few pushes to make sure all those pistons are seated properly and none of them are uh, out and binding up. Alright guys, the next part is probably the hardest part, which is assembling the center section into the unit. Make sure the bearing's in there. This is the pump side. It has more pistons than the motor side. Um, sit that in there. Get your brand new center section. Make sure everything's oiled up with some fresh oil. Um, and here's another critical part is this bypass valve. It's this little piece of metal that slides into the motor side. There's a little groove for it. And then I reached my hand up through it and I held it with my pointer finger to make sure that when I was sitting in there that it would not fall out. And then uh, we're going to grab the pump side again, sit it on there how it's supposed to go, and slide it into the unit, um, squeezing it with your you know, two thumbs, pushing it down in, and making sure that you don't let go of that bypass uh, little valve until it's in there and it can hold itself in. Um, and then slide it in there, try to get everything right. It's going to be a little difficult, but if you work at it, you'll definitely get it in. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab this input shaft, the one that your pulley goes onto, and just slide it in there. Um, it's probably not going to go in all the way, but just have it sit there for now. And then we're going to go to the output shaft. And this one, again, it's more lined up easier to get in than the output shaft. And just have that sit there so everything's lined up so when we start bolting it down, we don't torque anything down bad. Next thing is to grab these three brand new bolts that come with the center section and install them. I slowly tighten down these bolts a little at a time watching making sure nothing was getting bound up and uh, there was a lot of trial and error to get this thing in there but this is what worked for me. I ended up ha having to pull that shaft out to move around um, the pump side and then tighten things down even more as much as possible Finally, after everything, um, I fiddled with it enough to get this thing to slide in. And uh, everything was good to go. On HydroGear's website, they do have a manual for this unit. And the center section bolts says it should be torqued down to 450 to 550 inch pounds. Um, just be sure you're doing inch pounds and not foot pounds. And also the side housing screws get 105 to 165 inch pounds also. Um, they're the only two torques that I used in the manual. Now we can install the gears that connect the output shaft on the hydraulic pump and motor to the axle gear. And do not forget the washers and how they go um, in the order that they are installed. Now we're finally at the point that we can finally close this thing up. And I use this ultra black um, gasket maker. It says maximum oil resistant, so I thought it would be the best RTV gasket maker to use for this uh, application. Once we get this RTV on here, then we can finally put our cover on to close her up. And then we can put all the bolts down Tighten them up till they're snug. Um, don't tighten them down too hard. And then once you get these all tightened down, we could finally torque them to 105 to 165 inch pounds, not foot pounds. Now we're going to move on to installing all the seals. This is the seal for the input shaft. And then after it's pressed in there, um, you, use, you put this clip in there to hold it in. 
Um, next, we put this for the bypass valve seal. I should have used a socket to push that in instead of a screwdriver. And then you slide the rod in there. And then after the rod's in there, then you can finally put the clip in. I had to use a screwdriver to push the clip in because my pliers were too big. Then after that, you can install the little lever that the bypass little rod hooks onto. And then the clip that holds this on is pressed on. So you could sit it on there. And after you sit it on there, you can um, use a socket that fits over and push it down. Now we can install the seal for the emergency brake shaft. Um, I tried pressing it with my fingers, but it took a little bit more effort. So I grabbed a socket and a little hammer and just gave it a few taps until it was seated properly. Finally, we can add the gear to it, put in the clip and use a plier to press that clip in there. Make sure it's seated. And then finally, if you took this part off, which it's not necessary to take off, um, add that part back on and then uh, tighten that bolt. Next thing is going to be to push down the seal for your linkage shaft. Um, I had to use the socket um, to tap in to make sure that was seated just like the last one and then add this plastic ring down um, add this this is like the stopper for the linkage and that is an allen key bolt that we took out earlier this don't you don't have to make sure this is perfect right now it's going to be adjusted later then we can finally assemble the rest of the linkage and we're almost complete just one more step after this and do not forget your spring. Last but not least, we're going to reassemble the pulley and fan assembly um, in reverse order that we did before. And then I'm going to go back to my garage and use the impact on this nut. Now we are ready to fill this thing up, remove the cap. And I used one of these uh, gear oil pumps because I thought it would be better than uh, using a funnel and 20w50 is the recommended oil to use according to the manual and it takes about 1.75 quarts to fill this thing up then we can reinstall and tighten the fill plug i hit the pulley nut with the impact gun to make sure it was tight and now to install it first things i do is put the two side bolts on first and that helps it hang so i can move it around more easily put the front bolt in there and then slide the long bolts that hold both transaxles together with the um, spacer tube in between both of them and just tighten everything down including the side bolts and that one front bolt then we can move on to all the linkage now we can install and tighten down the bolt for the control lever and while we're here we're going to install the lever for the bypass valve move over to the rod for the emergency brake. I couldn't get this in here with it in the machine. So pro tip, just install it before you put it into the machine and you'll be good to go. Last thing is to install the clip for the parking brake rod. After you install the belt, we're ready to purge the system. We're going to pull this bypass lever and we're going to sit it on the other side for the first step. Okay, now for the process, we're going to get on the mower with the rear tires off the ground and we're going to start it up and run it at full throttle. The first time is going to be with the um, the uh, bypass lever engaged and the axle is not going to turn and you're going to push the lever forward and reverse several times and then you're going to disengage the bypass valve and turn it forward and reverse several times and then check the fluid afterwards and add as needed. Final thing is going to be adjusting your linkage so when you're in the neutral position the axle is not going to turn um, forward or reverse when your tires are off the ground. Um, to do this you're going to loosen the allen nut um, or allen bolt on the linkage and then slide it forward or reverse depending on which way your tire is moving and then tighten it and when it is in the um, neutral position and your axle is not moving. You may have to adjust the lollipop end fitting um, if you can't slide your lever into the slot um, when it is in the neutral position and you do that by removing that bolt and turning it forward or reverse. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If it helped you out, please like and subscribe below. Um, if you have, if I missed anything, please comment and with any questions, concerns, 
or advice on how to fix these things. I fixed this one for less than $200 versus paying $500 plus for a new transaxle. Um, I bought all the parts off eBay and I had no issue at all with them. Um, thank you very much again and tune in next time.